I'm Ted Pierce, Executive Director of the Surplus Line Association. I want to thank, thank uh, Seal Norton. I certainly enjoyed working with you this year. You have the skill and the art, and you cast a fantastic image for the SLA. I appreciate your vitality, your rational judgment, your willingness to make decisions, both big and small. Seal is quick to praise and always looking for opportunities to find someone doing something right. These are just some of the many qualities that distinguish Seal Norton. Turning to the Surplus Line Association internal operations. In information technology, the SLA's ability to collect, analyze, disseminate information is key to fulfilling our mission. You are soon to experience an advance in technology and an explosion in information thanks to the software development project we are currently engaged. The SLA is in the process of launching an electronic filing system that eliminates the need for hard copy submissions. The goal is for your agency management systems to submit monthly batch filings in the form of data and image directly to the SLA database. Currently, several brokers or their IT staffs or their software vendors can test this application. When their testing is successful, brokers can begin filing their monthly batch filings electronically with the SLA. Later this year, another electronic interface will be available that involves manually logging into the SLA website to upload broker data and images. Brokers that want to join the test environment and become electronic filers must first register for the SLA broker extranet by visiting us at the following web address, uh, support at slacal.org. The electronic filing system allows brokers to reply and or print tags with attachments, view and or print invoices, view and or print your SLA filing history, upload and or file XML data batches, and upload and or file image batches. Moving on. In the area of education, the SLA has continued to provide substantive, well-attended seminars for continuing education credits. But we want to tap your expertise. Your variety of perspectives and skills gives this organization a renewable source of qualified, forward-thinking leaders who reflect the innovation and creativity of this marketplace. The SLA Data Processing Department, another department, is responsible for receiving, processing, and recording and storing required filings in accordance with the insurance code. The SLA Data Processing Department, headed by, uh, headed head by who? Pat McCauley, sorry. I'm, whenever I go off the script, it's, it's rough. Uh, <laughs> the Processing Department processed 490,000 uh, surplus line policies in 2007. During the course of the year, the SLA Financial Department, another department, received from the Insurance Department 12 new applications for, the, for eligibility on the list of eligible surplus line insurers. The SLA Financial Department assists the Department of Insurance in evaluating, monitoring the financial condition of insurers who are eligible to operate in, the Californ in California on a surplus line basis. As of December 31, 2007, there were 91 foreign insurers and 30 alien insurers on the California list of eligible surplus line insurers. During 2007, the California Department of Insurance added four foreign insurers, three alien insurers, and nine Lloyd syndicates to the Leslie. These insurers are reviewed by the SLA on an ongoing basis to ensure continued eligibility. The evaluation process is to ascertain that each insurer meets the financial stability, integrity, and reputation standards established by the California Department. This also includes collecting, reviewing all regulatory filings by the insurers for compliance with California requirements. An insurer who fails to meet these requirements is brought to the attention of the insurance department for regulatory action to protect California consumers. In 2007, the SLA issued 30 bulletins. These substantive communiques included Bulletin 1141, describing the provisions of Assembly Bill 522, which was enacted in 2007. This bill provides for a 90-day policy term extension on surplus line policies without having to make an SLA filing, without having to do a diligent search. You simply have to file the uh, endorsement with the SLA. This bill also describes the timing required on the D1 disclosure notice when written on personal lines coverages. Bulletins 1140 and 1134 attempted to clarify the new surplus line broker licensing fees and describe who must be licensed as the result of Assembly Bill 1639 passed in 2007. 
Bulletin 1127 announced that brokers no longer need to retain their surplus line regulatory filing re records in hard copy format. These records can now be maintained electronically for a minimum of five years. Bulletin 1123 provided clarification from our general counsel as to the legality of independent procurement and courtesy filings in California. I encourage you to review these bulletins and to take a look at the 25 most important bulletins viewable on our website under publications. Some of these bulletins which are very much still in effect date back to 1992. Moving on, with the election of Steve Poisner as insurance commissioner, we have seen a positive step forward in the modernization of the insurance department and pr improved cooperation with industry in dealing with consumer social and economic issues. Steve Poisoner is a commissioner who wants to do the right thing. Among his initiatives is a top-down review of the department with the intention of adopting zero-based budgeting. Steve Poisoner also has called for the department to become paperless. As part of this modernization, on November 7, 2007, the Department of Insurance released a new version of its online fast licensing application service for surplus line broker applicants, both resident and non-resident. The applicants that apply online receive a checklist that provides a list of any additional information that needs to be submitted prior to licensure. The checklist includes a copy of the surplus line and or special line surplus line endorsement authorization form. The online application also calculates license fees to ensure the proper fees are being submitted. I want to recognize and praise the regulators that are here from the California Department of Insurance. From the Premium Tax Audit Bureau in Los Angeles, we have Robert Palumbo, David Okamura, Shirley Villalon, Virginia Punjana, and Jenny Twang. Uh, can you raise your hands if you're here? Thank you. And I'm s <laughs> sorry for the pronunciation there on the last two names. On the national scene, with congressional action complete on the Terrorism and Insurance and Terrorism Risk and Insurance Act extension and the federal flood insurance program. Congress may take a second look at the Not Admitted and Reinsurance Reform Act. This is also referred as NRRA or H.R. 1065 and S929. This is a bill that attempts to create a national standard for the states on how they regulate, collect, and allocate surplus line premium taxes. The bill would also establish national standards for surplus line insurer eligibility and a national standards for how states regulate reinsurance. In a parallel effort, the SLA is seeking a state-based solution to the complex problems posed to surplus line brokers who attempt to allocate premium taxes on multi-state policies. A surplus line insurance multi-state compliance compact, or SLIM pact, has been drafted by the AAMGA, NAPSLO, and the stamping offices. The compact is intended to facilitate the payment collection and distribution of premium taxes on your multi-state policies. The compact is essential to streamlining and improving the efficiency of the surplus line market by eliminating duplicative, conflicted state regulatory requirements among the states. As a former federal lobbyist, I can tell you that if the states do not adopt this solution and fast, Congress will act first. And when they do, they're unlikely to have any regard for the current state insurance regulatory regime established, which established the surplus line marketplace as we know it today. Congress is also likely to have little or no regard for the wholesale insurance distribution system. This is why a multi-state compact is a necessity. The compact <laughs> is in the final stages of being drafted and should be ready for introduction into the state legislatures later this quarter. Moving on, the 14th annual AM Best Company Special Report on Surplus Lines Market was released on October 1, 2007. The report indicates that surplus lines grew 173% among domestic professional carriers over the past five years. That's 2002 through 2006, far faster than the total U.S. property casualty market. According to the report, the U.S. surplus line share of the commercial lines market was 14.4% in 2006. The surplus line industry posted strong underwriting results in 2006, with a combined ratio of 79.6 for domestic professional writers aided by light catastrophe losses and disciplined underwriting. No financial impairments were reported in 2006 among surplus line companies, which have outperformed the total property casualty industry in this regard. Catastrophe exposed coastal property, 
remained a notable exception to the softening of the market, which is a benefit nationwide to surplus lines. In July of 2007, AM Best affirmed the A financial strength rating for Lloyds and upgraded their issuer credit rating from A to A+. In conclusion, the SLA is well on its way to automating its processes, which will bring benefit to the brokers in the form of streamlined filing procedures. Most importantly, we have benefited from, to a great extent from the brokering community's understanding respect for the rules of surplus lines in California. With cooperation from the California legislature, the Department of Insurance is leading the charge in the effort to modernize insurance regulation. The SLA has positioned itself to implement these changes and potential changes in 2008. We continue to perform our statutory and regulatory duties to the fullest extent and in cooperation with our colleagues at the Department of Insurance. This has been and continues to be a successful joint arrangement between the SLA and the department. Our next speaker is the director of the stamping office, Joy Lockery. The chief operating officer is another title she holds. She's responsible for overseeing all operating departments, the administrative functions of human resources, finance, accounting, payroll, purchasing, banking, and financial investments. Joy prepares and presents the annual budget and quarterly financial statements and interfaces with outside auditors for the annual financial audit. Please welcome Joy Lockery. Thank you. 